Hi, everybody. How are you? This is what is the ask, and it's our final meeting for the 2023 year. Can you believe it, Elton? We have been going all year long. Yeah, it's um amazing. Um, because the topics we cover take a lot of energy, and to, really to maintain that maintain that level through a whole year is pretty awesome. It is, but there's so much there's so much that's going on that um, I almost think we're not spending enough time. You know, I know that we have our own lives and that we can't possibly do this every single week. And 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 I well, I, I could, you know, but it's like <laughs> I can't. But um, but I almost think it's necessary that um, we may need to do that because, um, again, as I said, there's mm. so many issues. But um, to the audience, um, we have less than a year, um, 11 months, to um, decide as Black voters in this country um, who we're going to vote for. And everybody says this is the most consequential election of... And you know what? <laughs> I say that every every election cycle as well, but it's true. It's it's really true. Now I'm gonna say as a Democrat, and I've not said all year long that I'm a Democrat, but I'm a Democrat that lean that I'm an I'm sort of an independent that was leaning Democrat. And uh, when Obama came about, I said, oh, I want to vote in the primary. And in Florida, you have to be either Democrat or Republican to vote in the primaries. So once I did that, I just decided it's too much trouble going back and forth. And I just stayed Democrat. And the reason that I'm Democrat is because when I look at the issues that are important to uh, me and my family and the people around me, um, if I have to fight with a party, um, I want to fight with people whose issues more are more aligned with me and where I'm not competing against some other group that is the direct opposite of me, the furthest opposite for me. Mm -hmm. And um, while there are groups within the Democrats, because Democrats are notorious for having so many different yeah, they're very, they're very splintered. Constituents, exactly, and it's growing. It seems that um, um, it's it's a challenge, but I think it's a bigger challenge if Black folks go into Republican territory and compete with MAGA for attention um, on the issues that are important to them. So. I am a Democrat and I've been one, I guess, from the beginning. And I think sometimes we get ribbed for Black folks, just keep on voting for the Democrat. But I, I, th I think um, it's not an issue of loyalty to the Democrats, at least in my case. It's more an issue of what are the issues that are important to me. But it's um, also, as I analyze what is going on, that um, Black people aren't really getting anywhere. I think a lot of it has to do with um, um, Black folks, the fact that, and we've talked about this and covered some of this this somewhat in, in our discussions in the past, and certainly you guys, you can find us online through YouTube, What is the Ask, our WTA, and it seems that if Black folks truly came together as one voting block, mm -hmm. um, then what they say will have weight, it will have power, it will have sway. Mm -hmm. And until that happens, until there is a clear agenda or goal or coalescing around a goal, mm -hmm. um, it's it will be very hard for us to influence um, either of the two parties. Because mm -hmm. right now our reputation is that we don't come together. And um, if we did decide to do some of those suggestions that we've said in the past, you know, stand down and whatever else, most of us would not stand down. So what's the realistic position for Black folks in this, um, in this election cycle? 
you know, and I'm going to start with that question, but truly, really, I, I'd, I'd like to get to the economy mm -hmm. and what's going on in the economy, because I say, wow, the economy is great. And of course, the, um, the word on the street is, no, the economy's bad. And, and then I look at all the shopping for Christmas and whatever else. And I'm like, wow, the economy is great. And then I text you and you're like, no, the economy is bad. And I'm thinking, well, you know what? I think I'd like some clarification on that. But before we get into that, because I, I want to hear from you, because I get the feeling that we're not necessarily going to agree but at least I want to have an understanding. And as somebody who is a novice when it comes to the economy, um, even though I've taken classes in college, um, I haven't really delved into it in real life, mm. say just textbook stuff. Um, but, you know, to my first question, um, what's, why aren't we able to coalesce around an issue? We, we have 11 months. Right. November 5th. Yeah. I think the reason why, and, I, and I'm going to, I'm going to try and speak like an outside observer who's been here for 43 years, but is realistic that he's an outside observer. I like that you said that, by the way. And, yeah. um, okay. and I, I'm curious, having been here for 43 years, why in mm -hmm. the world did you come here and what what drove you to come here? But don't worry about that now, but you can okay. give me yeah. your observation. Okay. Um, from what little I have seen in history, when a group of people sees power, I'll just use that broadly. It could be land, minerals, resources. It's never... A majority that's lead, that's at the front of the pack. Okay. Now the collective may be on code, as we like to say, in terms of a, a, a general philosophy or better better yet narrative. The, the collective is not on code with the philosophy. That's kind of hidden. But the narrative, the story. Um, there's a leader that's saying that we are a great people and we have a right to exist and expand, to, 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 to sum it up. And that leader says, you see that piece of land, you see that ele electoral party, you see that federal agency, whatever, we're going to focus and take it. And the reason we're going to take it is because it's going to make us a better and bigger and, and badder people. And then, and then the more confident the people get, the more energy they have to expand even further. That's how this country grew. That's how these Anglos grew, grew this country. That's how um, you, you go across to Europe. They, they had a lot of fighting until somebody said, yo, enough's enough. Yeah, that's let's, true. let's start this zero zone thing. Even though that's failure, let's start this zero, zero zone thing because the thing is to maintain the peace. You know, Same thing in Asia, the, the Chinese dynasties, the Japanese dynasties are the same thing. I can't speak to their success. But hey, China's still here after a thousand years because that same, that basic philosophy, even though it went through different governments and, and narratives and what have you, that same core philosophy still runs through. And they understand that, which is why they plan long term so they can maintain that. So they understand that they're going to be doing this, but they're following that straight line. So the group- that straight the, line. That, yeah, that, they, they, of, of, of growth. Right, but that's that that straight line of growth is shrouded in the narratives yes. created by that. Yes, but yes, from the top. By that few. That few. It's always a few. I like that. I one 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 day I forgot when I was on Facebook, I was able to escape. But I put a post up, and I said, "This is my theory." I called it the um, the atheist anarchist theory. There were hundred people in in. in at the bottom of, uh, at the foot of a valley or inside a valley. Mm -hmm. And 10 of them who didn't even know each other, they just looked around, they were on the same code, same vibe. And they just, each of them individually went up to the top of the hill and they figured, and they started talking and they realized, oh, we're on the same frequency. Then they looked down and they said, 
that 90 are noisy and chaotic and what have you. We need to give them something. We uh -huh. need to give, so hence the philosophy. Now, did that really happen? No. However, no. You know, in, in 10 seconds, something I just learned a, a few weeks ago that you've got a very top, and it's not a, a conspiracy theory or anything, but long story short, you got a very top that sees nothing above it. So that very top is what we call the state. They're the philosophy, and they're always in hunt for someone to carry out a narrative that strengthens their philosophy. So for Blacks, Blacks are lacking that because of our history of how we got here. The problem is we keep belaboring that point. So we've kept ourselves in a, especially, I'm trying to speak slightly as an outsider, because in the Caribbean, it's, it's, as a matter of fact, I put a blog post up delineating the two. We do have a similarity. But when it comes to, I'll just use ADOS with small A, small D, small O, small S, you know. The, the, African, the, the American descendants of slaves have heard too many narratives from people, who, especially from people who look just like them, that keep them in 1865 or 1864. And there's, there's that group of leaders or that one leader has not broken out yet to take that group to the next level, one. And two may also be that this group called Blacks don't see anything else to conquer or don't see something to conquer or don't understand it's supposed to be in conquering mode. That part. Okay. Yeah, no, so, yeah, I agree, especially that part. It's supposed to be in conquering mode, mode excuse me. Instead, we are in appeasement's too strong a word when um, adjacency to power mode. Oh, you know, we just snuggle yes. right up next to adjacency to power. Adjacency to power mode. Yeah. That's where we are. It's like, you know, if I just stay right close to, 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 to the, the ex-master because he done put all this thing together. So just get a little piece. I'll take the crumbs off the table. No, the crumbs aren't enough. The crumbs, the crumbs become indigestible by the time they hit the floor. They can't sustain you. So now the flip, the pushback against that argument is, of course, well, you're 13% of the population. You got 2% of the capital. You know, this ain't Vietnam where you're fighting a guerrilla warfare because it's not even your turf. It's their turf. So that's where the real work comes in by any small group or individual that wants to take Blacks to that conquering mode level is to figure out, yes, how do I carve out space in this where we are promoted? I look around at this globe and I see other groups carving out their space. The, prime, the number one example, Israel, they carved out their own state. Uh, yes. You know, they, right. they, they, I mean, I'm going to forget the part. All my white friends are Jewish. <laughs> so <laughs> when I, I talk back, I say, okay, the, the trans whites, because they're, really, they're not Anglo. You know, they're all Eastern European. Yes, three, right. three, and, three, and, three, all four Eastern European, and one is actually Syrian through her mother. But none of them are from, they're not Western Europeans, right? Right. So it's like, but again, you, you, so you look at the world and you look at these groups and you say to yourself, well, not that we want to be them, but they left a framework. Now, their framework from 1948 won't fit us in 2023, but there are some elements. That's what we need to learn. And, and whoever, and that's the kind of leadership that Blacks need. It's very important because if we don't get that kind of leadership, for one, we're going to remain discombobulated on or I, I and worse agree. yet staying in that staying in that pain and suffering mode when we need I to agree. get to conquering mode. I I agree with you. You know, I was listening to Brian Stevenson, the justice, the guy for um do you know who he is? He's the um, um he's the one who fights the justice uh project or something like that. You know, all oh. the, in in Mississippi where you have all the um the markers for slaves hanging. Mm. He's taken on some cases and he's just really fighting for justice for people who um, um, are not, don't have a chance or what have you, but he's really extremely good at what he does. But, um, you know, he, he, he was, you know, I, I gave too much on the front, so you don't remember what your point you were trying to make. Well, that's where I'm at with good old Brian Stevenson. But um, 
he he really has some really strong points. He felt that perhaps we're not looking for a single leader anymore. Mm. Right? That time has passed. You you you've had you've had your people come up and 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 and, and do the singular leader and maybe the times are such that it's not about a single leader. And if you mm. look even at what's going on with um, Israel and the Palestinians or Israel and Hamas, as they want us to say, right. um, you, you we're looking at sort of an uprising that's not coming from an individual that's forcing even the United States or the president to sort of back up a little bit on that full commitment to Israel. Mm -hmm. It's, the young people in the universities. It's politicians who dare speak out and, and, and be censored, perhaps. It's now all of a sudden people saying, hey, wait a minute, it's the television where we are seeing what's happening mm -hmm. with our own eyes. Right. And so there's a move afoot that threatens the politicians who will go all out we're for Israel or what have you. Yes. So, so to the individual, but, but if you think about it, Martin Luther King used, and I, I think I've said this before, but although he was the individual, he a used the young people right, and he used the media. Yes. And he had a connection into going into the white house and, and speaking on behalf of, of, of black folks on, on their issues. So, I, I, I kind of believe that, and I, I, I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure where it's going because I, I agree with you. It's like, we, we're waiting for a leader. We're waiting for a leader, but maybe that's not what we're waiting for. We're waiting for that event. Mm -hmm. And the George Floyd thing came and went. Right. right? Yeah, because it wasn't- able to sustain it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I couldn't sustain it because, well, to your point about, Maybe multiple leaders. Maybe it is that anarch that that um anarchist model, where again those ten were not did not know each other, but as individuals, um, they were ready to at least do their own thing. It's just that it was multiplied when the ten of them got together. Mm -hmm. But um, but 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 yes, I, I can I can see that point also with the yes. That moment that we thought with uh, we that we thought we had with George Floyd, I think the past three years, at least to me, has just shown that it was manufactured in the sense of not the murder. I've heard some counter arguments as oh, no, 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 no. I, I understand as a lawyer, you're gonna try and show. I get that, but he died in their hands, just like Freddie Gray. It's on them. I ain't, I ain't letting these cops off the hook. It's not gonna work. But what happened afterwards was not organic because this this DEI stuff especially came from, in my opinion, these corporations who they probably heard rumblings within their ranks, but decided to quell the mob ahead of schedule by giving them some spaces to be because they weren't probably getting that in their corporations. So you get that, and really what they, I know just using DEI as an example, but what they developed with DEI was not scalable to the other 85%. What is it, what is it, the, the, the man or woman who's, who's, um, who's a cashier at this little, there's this little grocery in my neighborhood called Big Bear. You just mm -hmm. Run of the mill, just, you know, it's not Whole Foods, it's not none of that, it's just pure, literally basic, right? Mm -hmm. What does that cashier have to do or care about DEI. That kind of stuff does not move her or him. You know? So you need leadership or an awareness that says to bring people on board, even though they're not gonna be sitting at the table leading, but to bring them on board, you gotta speak to their issues. And sometimes you got to speak issues to them that they're not aware of. You gotta wake something up in them, you know? which was supposed to be what woke was actually about back in 2010 before it was taken over by white liberals. But that's another discussion. 
I think it is but, another discussion, but if you look at it, even if you look at the Black Lives Matter movement, it was all taken over. It was all taken over. We lost yes. control of it. Whoever yes. that was, who was pushing the initiative from the beginning, lost control. And when the yeah. money started flowing in, that <laughs> that was almost intentional. Yes, it, it gave an opportunity to that wave of money because there's something happening there where a connection was made. Either the money saw that or someone said, well, we need to finance this. Who do we go to? They went to the deep pockets and deep pockets are going to always put some terms and conditions on stuff. Yeah, it, and, it, and we lost the whole, yeah. So we have trouble developing narratives and mm. uh, allowing them to sustain or stick stick to the, this is the story. No other story. This is yeah. This is the story again. Going back to uh, going back to my 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 uh, Eastern European brother and sisters, they were raised with a story. They're not gonna tell me that you know, because you know, all you draw the line, blah blah. Oh, it never comes up. But I understand they mm -hmm. had a story, and it was put into their heads, and they follow it. They have a they have guiding. Yeah, they got free trips to Israel for crying out yeah. loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they get to go back home. And that's anyway, they get to go back home. And and, and you're and, right on that. That's another that, yeah, that's another discussion. <laughs> you know, but, you know, but they, that's really they, not your home, but <laughs> they got to go back to home, home. and then become even more indoctrinated exactly. and create this 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 community. This yes worldwide community connected to this land which yes. they wanted because everybody else had it even we had it we we know i know i'm here i know i'm an american but i'm connected to africa i know right, that, right? although i don't know i know where but not a specific country because right. it wasn't happening at that point but right. i know i'm from west africa so but i have that connection mm -hmm. They didn't feel that they had that connection, right? Mm -hmm. Somehow the narratives, I'm getting back to you and and the whole um, narratives that were created even at the beginning of this country that continue to control our every move. Yes. Narratives um, for us don't seem to stick. Mm, no, they... They don't stick. Um, I, I mean, if they have a narrative about us, that sticks. Yes. But our own narratives don't stick. And, and we don't quite believe it. Mm. Um, no matter how many, um, no matter what evidence is out there to say otherwise. Yes. Doesn't. And, and it, it, it's kind of like... Um, Black people, and I mean the ADOS and Black immigrants, uh, are prone to to want to assimilate, um, and that's where that power adjacent thing comes in. Yes, where yeah. we're satisfied with that. Yes, yeah, it, 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 and I'm just sad that we're satisfied with that. Yeah, yeah, and and that's something that we have to work on in order to get to that next level. And as long as we're inculcated with other narratives, it's like more walls going up around us. And then, um, yeah, so that just makes it harder. I I, I don't want to say impossible, because if I say impossible, then it's, it's game over. Um, yeah. It makes it harder, but don't you think that the election that's coming up is inconsequential it is if um trump gets in mm -hmm. that game is over actually if trump gets in you're gonna have 75 percent of blacks going oh lord war is me you're gonna have 25 percent of blacks saying god damn it that's enough it's time how they how they how they exit or create the exit, I don't know. But that may be an event for some blacks. 
that okay this guy's in event. we don't have to get to that event but, but, I, but I guess i see what you're saying though yeah i i me personally i my only well and it's really i just like to, every now and then just like to be bad but i know you, and that's when, 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 when you do that it's like I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm he's in Atlanta, folks. <laughs> in Atlanta, I'm down here in Tampa. But when he does that, I want to slap him around because your bad is is not helpful. <laughs> it's not helpful. No, my bad is very helpful. Mm. You know, it, it, it's very helpful because my All bad right. brings reality. I mean, okay, when when he got elected, you know, he cost me about a quarter of a million dollars. Because all of a sudden, it's interesting for people who live in D.C. who've seen it. When a new administration takes over, it's the scariest shit you'll ever see. It's yeah. scary. When 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 George W. took over, you could literally see it. I mean, you saw people kind of cowboy hats and boots. I, I There were these two women in the train. I was on a, a red line going back to Shady Grove. Two women in the Oh, Bush is in. Oh, my God. Our program's going to get cut. You could taste it. Yeah. But I, you know, Trump, he he doesn't scare me. He just changes the reality. Oh, really? He just, he doesn't even really change the reality. He just, he just another room in the, re, in the house of reality. That's how I see him. In other words, you know I, that, I, I, yeah, I had a house in, in Maryland and there was one room that I, I never went into. It was my ex-wife's like sitting room. It's not, it's not that she didn't say I can't come in. I just never, it was like no incentive. And there was another room downstairs. Same thing. I think I stood, I stood in it once. But it doesn't mean that the room didn't exist. I just didn't pay attention to the rooms. It's the same thing with Trump. And the reason I can say that is because I can look at this guy and look at what he says. And yes, I'll, I'll put it out there. I'm in a very small minority. I watched 95% of his rallies. Why? Because he made me laugh. And once you get to the point where you know what he's about, how much of him can you take seriously, which is not much, then right. yeah, you could have a big chuckle. I have a big chuckle. I enjoyed just watching because this man was so stupid. Said the same shit every time. But he's just comical. Every but, single, but every single right. time from the time it was, I think he went back on the campaign trail like two weeks after he got inaugurated. Yeah. But my point is that there is a disconnect between the reality of any president's power and what you think they can do to you. And if, if you know, as a lawyer, when I look at the Constitution, I look at his powers, just the ones in writing, forget the, the um, ancillary powers for a second. The president of the United States is, 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 is a weak president. His strength is in the military. And he did not exercise a lot of that strength other than to say, we're pulling out of wherever we are. No, but he couldn't. He was surrounded by um, folks who would not allow that to happen. And they yeah. didn't pass, but they did their part when they needed to. Which is yeah, He which will is, not be surrounded by those people in the next iteration of Trump. Which may be good if you're anti-war. Because he made it quite clear by his actions. But I'm not, I don't want to get into the specifics of, of that today. Okay. What I'm getting at is, I, I mentioned that only because constitutionally that is his greatest power. Mm -hmm. And he, he talked about wielding it, but compared to the present guy and compared to the guys before him, he didn't wield it much. So as long as he keeps me out this of is chicken shit, let me say that. And I know people don't like war. I don't really like war. I'm an army brat. I get it. My dad spent time in Korea. He spent time in 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 Vietnam, and, mm -hmm. and he was away more than he was with the family. Right. But um, Trump stayed out of war because of the way that he sort of, excuse me, pussied up to. Xi Jinping, Ping, I guess it is, and Xi Jinping, um, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, and um, uh, Vladimir yep. Putin, and they mm -hmm. were sort of like flummoxed by what, what, what is this? 
And so they said, it's a matter of time. We can figure out how to just butter them up and get what we want. We don't have to go to war. Yeah. What And what they wanted, and what, what they wanted was a, they wanted the U.S. out of Asia as much as the U.S. was able to stand. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. So if I look at it using a realist approach, I'm like, well, what do we expect? Because the U.S. made it very clear back in the 1840s, they wanted Europe out of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So that's just, to me, that's just statesmanship going on. Yeah. My, my, my thing is, I got skin in the game. I got a 21-year-old who's draft age. I am not sending him to fight anybody's war. Mm -hmm. So the less belligerent you are, even if you got a pussy up, if it means that you don't lose any, if, we, if the country doesn't lose any trade, and I don't lose my son, I'm good. Mm -hmm. But the other stuff, but the other stuff, again, connect, for example, uh, the cries of, I don't want to spend too, I know we don't want to spend too much time on this guy. I'm about to go so on. I'm, okay. Okay. Because I, would, I speak in, okay, I'm going to make it in general. I don't care who the president is. Mm -hmm. Once you start con connecting any president, because when I was teaching, I had a student tell me he was afraid of Obama because, and I was like, why are you afraid of Obama? Well, well, no, dude, you got to make connections. You got to justify your fear because once fear becomes unjustified, there's no controlling it. Yeah. You want to lead to divisiveness. Okay. So that's my thing with, with all of them. I got to look at you and say, well, just what can you do? Oh, in most cases, you do have influence and you have the bully pulpit of persuasion, but how far down can that reach? It's never been considered because we make assumptions. Test it. Look at what any president is. I don't care who they are. I don't care who they are because I'm, I'm not I'm not party affiliated. I don't give a damn. I don't care for any of them. But look at their executive orders and then look at how it impacted you. You will find that there's, you may find some indirect, indirect connections, but the direct connections enough to keep you up at night making you think you're writing Anne Frank 2.0? No, it's not there. It's not that. So I really, and the older I get, I realize, ah, these guys, eh, what's more important to me is the Federal Reserve. So that's a nice segue to the economy. But... Yeah, let's, let's segue over to that. Um, definitely there's more to talk about on um, uh, Trump and the impact that he might have versus the one that Biden's have, especially as it relates to war and mm -hmm. how they sort of maneuver in the world. Mm -hmm. But we're going on to the economy. So I'm thinking that we're doing pretty well and the charts that I'm looking at says that we are. Um, I get the feeling that um, the over the next two to three months, we'll likely see more positive outlook from um, some people and people will begin feeling better about their positions. And it usually starts around Christmas time when they realize that, wow, we had a pretty good Christmas, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. the turkey didn't cost as much as and so on and so forth. But um, I'm going to I'm predicting sort of this uptick based on the charts that I'm looking at mm -hmm. where even mortgage rates are now beginning to go down. Yeah. Um, I was listening to a housing guy, a real estate guy, um, talking about rates, and he says that's the wrong thing to look at. I mean, yeah, that may entice you, but what really matters is that monthly payment. And no matter what that rate is, if that monthly doesn't fit your budget, you're screwed. Oh, that's that's true, but I'm not looking I, for a house that I can't afford, right? Right, but people. But there are people out there, there are a whole lot of them out there that were back there in 07, 08, 06, and even yeah. today mm -hmm. that got a lot of house that they can't afford. And even if at point A you can afford it, what does point B, C, and D say about affordability down the road? And that's what I'm looking at down the road. But first, let me back up a little bit as to why I think the economy, the main reason why I think the economy is no good. Well, is it that there, are problems, that there are problems in the economy. Whatever. I'm not, I said no good, but that's the wrong phrase. Why yeah. there problems? Because every time I Careful, go because I'm about to slap you around, but go on. 
Well, and I'd love you to. <laughs> 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 yes, That's been a 41-year wish. Yeah. But <laughs> when I'm in a store and I'm listening to Black folk, you see, mostly if you're in Whole Foods, white people, they may be saying it in their brains, maybe more now than ever. But usually, you know, there's people, oh, my God, they've got this brand coffee. It's only $25 a bag. Huh? They don't phase them. They don't even say it. They're not phased. I only heard one white guy get phased over prices in Whole Foods in the 12, 13 years I've been walking in that store. I looked up, I said, mm -hmm. he's I miffed. Always are, but... Versus Asis. And that's an everyday, every aisle event. Mm -hmm. And these individuals are being hit with higher prices higher rents, higher food, higher energy. And in a lot of cases in my, I can tell you the business reasons, I could give you the, the economic reasons, but as a consumer, there is no reason. Why are you paying, why did your rent go up for an apartment where the amenities did not? And nobody can explain that. You can't use supply chain to explain that. No, you can't. You can't, you can't. You can't use property, property tax, maybe property taxes. You just to, to use explain. plain old greedy landlord. That's what you use. And I and I and I and I up until maybe like right now, I'd never use that one because it would have tied me too much to Elizabeth Warren. But <laughs> there is some, there is some, I don't want to say truth. There's some plausibility to that argument. These landlords are looking around. And they're watching too much CNBC. They're watching too much Bloomberg. They listen to the news. They're listening. They're looking at what their friends or fellow landlords are doing and believe that they have to raise their rates. Mm -hmm. They're going pure on pure sentiment, pure emotion, no logic. They're not right. looking at the value that they're providing to their tenant. It hasn't changed. Right. That's and, the and the tenants, the tenant's income is not keeping up with these, these, these increases. But the but but the landlord does not give a damn about that pain. All they can hear is their set. Well, most landlords, there are a few out there who are like they're cool to that, but the majority are not. That's one thing that is going on. That's the pain I'm seeing. And also, the other the ahead. other thing too is um. Yeah, I was an economics major, like you back in night. What was it? Nineteen eighty two. Mm -hmm. I was um, talking to a friend of mine, James Fleming, and uh, he's my homeboy and a former central banker. But back then, I was like, James, I mean, I just got a poly. I'm just working on poli sci. I got to find a job. People don't hire political science majors, which is I now realize is not true. But back then, he said, man, take up economics. You know, I'm doing it. Blah blah. So that's how I got into it. Mm -hmm. And I stayed in it. And I was a practicing economist down in Florida for about a year. So it's it's like one of those things like Michael, Michael Colleone. Every time he tried to get out, they pull me back in. So, you know, you, you can't get away from it. So when when um four or five years ago, I started looking at foreign, foreign currencies. How does the world work like we opened talking about? Right. And the short of it is... And it's not a conspiracy. And I'm not one of these people on YouTube with, oh, with it. No, it's not. It's right in front of you. They tell you how it works. And you've got 190 nations connected by 190 central banks, more or less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they now have a major influence on how the economy is run. And those are the things that we don't understand. That, for example, our central banking system regulates the interaction between commercial banks who make a lot of their money from just selling loans to each other, selling currencies to each other. And those rates at which they can do those things are uh, influenced or in some cases set by the central banking system. That's why eight days out of the year once a one once a month for eight months the major financial media are sitting down at two o'clock on a wednesday afternoon waiting for jerome powell to come out and say what the overnight interbank rate is going to be right and as a side note 
when it comes to media, you got to be, you've got to be, you got to increase your learnings because people will say, oh, the Fed just raised rates. No, they raised short-term interest rates for those member banks that wish to sell um, to each other money. They didn't raise your rate. However, it influences your rate. And that's the disconnect. You know, right. That's one of the many disconnects that we need to understand before we start getting into, into the word salad. Now, I'll bring in Mr. Biden now, the word salad of inflation. Right. You know, what does that mean? Well, yeah, for, 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 for regular folk like us, it's like I was paying a dollar for gas the first of this month, the first of next month, I'm now paying a dollar and five cents. Something's going on, mm -hmm. you know? That's the inflation, but is so. But what is the cause? What is the real inflation? You know. So you got some schools of thought will tell you no. The, 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 that's increases in prices, yes. But the cause of the inflation is a change in the money supply. So mm -hmm. you need to look at what the decisions made, where the federal. You need to look at the rationale behind the Fed's decisions to raise their overnight rates, which impact your rate. They, they do that rate. over here, but that has a direct influence on the things that are important to me. Influence, yes. And that's all I want to get there. Because again, if you listen, I get, I get yeah, that. Yeah, they do have an influence. And and knowing this, when it comes to the politics, yeah, I do believe you know, that Joe Biden calls up Jerome Powell and says, Yo, Jerome, you know, can you like, you know, I'm running for a re-election. We you gotta have these rates down. Well, but, that has to happen. That that has to happen because they're trying to figure out how to avoid the recession, right? And it has to happen. The interplay it, between what Joe Biden's doing, mm -hmm. what Jerome Powell's doing, all of those things have to. Yes. Kind of they, they have to interplay, even right. because you know, and you know, the Fed likes to say that oh, we don't opine on the politics. We're independently, independently, uh, we're independent of politics. Lies. The law, for example, there's a 1978 statute, the Full Employment Act. It says you guys are supposed to coordinate on the function of the economy, the treasury, the federal reserve, and the executive. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to coordinate. So mm -hmm. when you tell me, Jerome, that you're not talking to the White House, oh, you know, that tell that to people who don't read the law. I know. That's what you do. You're the you are the government's banker. Mm -hmm. Any banker is going to talk to their number one customer. So yes. You can draw that connection between what's happening in the Federal Reserve. For example, if the Federal Reserve buys Treasury bonds, so it can give the Treasury cash. That impacts rates because if I'm buying, if I'm buying your bonds, ex expecting a two percent yield, and then I resell that stuff, somebody's going to want to sell it at three percent. You want to get the yields. So yes, there is a connection, and I would tell the audience when you hear these guys say that no, we're independent. That is not true. The Federal Reserve actually is an agent of the Congress. The Congress is responsible for regulating the value of money according to the Constitution. Yeah. Okay. But they formed it, you know, and there's a story behind the Federal Reserve, but I won't get into that. Long story short, they created the Federal Reserve and kicked, in my opinion, the can down the road to them to mm -hmm. manage the economy. And like everything in like everything in government. A simple task as to preventing bank runs, which was the Federal Reserve's real mission, has grown up to where now you got um, Maxine Waters every time she has a, um, a a financial services committee hearing in the House. Oh, um, uh, what what can you do about the the economy so that um maybe a few of us black folk can get a board position? That, that's Maxine. I'm sorry. You know, some of y'all love Auntie. Auntie, no. But that's what's going on now where the Federal Reserve has, their, their mission has, is bloated, where they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Okay, so so you tell the audience um, who is feeling that things are better, because there is mm -hmm. some, some mm -hmm. word on the street out there that you've got some, some of the um, voters saying, yeah, you know what? Things are getting better. Yes. How is it that that interest rate mm -hmm. you know, 
um, is impacting what I'm buying mm -hmm. and how I'm feeling about mm -hmm. my prospects going forward in terms mm -hmm. of um, there's even talk of young people are potentially feeling that they may be able to buy a home at some point. Right, right. right because right. while what Jerome Powell, Powell does has nothing to do with that mortgage rate, there's an influence there. There's an influence. And the influence right now is positive in the economy is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. E everything gets dark until it gets completely black. Now, I'm not trying to spread like You're such doom, a doom, doom, but, but after you, okay. I'll tell you where I got it from All real right. quick. I'm driving, I'm, I'm driving from Frederick, Maryland, heading to work in Fairfax, Virginia, going down, I think it was U.S. 15. I'm looking at all these Mac mansions going up. And, and I'm like, I'm not, I know I live in the DC area. You know, you got a few ninjas and everybody making a little extra money. I'm not one of them, but gosh darn it. Where's this money coming from? I learned my lesson. This was in Washington, DC. Mm -hmm. I saw my condo later on, the value just dropping like every day, literally. Hey, we went down another thousand. I'm like, what the hell? Here goes interest rates. Oh, I feel I can buy a, I can buy a house. Yes, because they're okay. telling you they're telling you that by next June they're gonna start cutting interest rates. Now, as the Fed cuts rates and it influence cuts by the commercial banks, when interest rates go down, asset values go up. That's the short of it. Okay, why? Because if interest rates are going down, why well, I can go out there and borrow money? And if people are if if homeowners are hearing that signal, oh, these ninjas are feeling really happy. They they they're thinking about buying. We're gonna build up our prices, so yeah. because because they they feel that their buyers out there who can now afford these homes, so right. they start to feel comfortable. Then they go to then the homeowners they go to their bankers. Well, you know I've got some assets that are with Jerome Powell dropping rates. My asset values are going up. That's true. Well, what assets do you have? I have land. I have cash. I got all this other stuff. Well, what does that mean? With my value going up, right, as a homeowner, if I'm seeing my equity going up in whatever I own, I can take those assets to my banker and borrow cash that I want to actually spend. Right. So that's the collateral is going up in value. Here's, but here's the other thing that interest rates tell you real quick. When I see, in, when I hear talks of interest rates going down, I'm thinking the economy is going to slow down eventually. Why? Because interest is the price you pay for money. Right. If the price is falling, supply and demand curve, demand may be falling too, or they, the banks expect demand to fall. If demand is falling for loans, that means that the transactional markets that this entire political economy depends on is slowing down. And right. when the transactional markets slow down, that sometimes leads to, I won't say usually, I won't want to scare too many more people tonight, that means a possibility of job losses. So, but, but that, but the, to me, that's inevitable. That if we're looking for that inflation rate to to come down, there will be job losses to balance that out. And mm -hmm. and and to me, the smart people in the room somewhere mm -hmm. have to figure out where that sweet spot is, and that's that has to happen. And and the you know uh unemployment can't be too high but it can be around four percent it doesn't have to be three something it could no, it doesn't have to be and, and, yes and you're but, describing the full the full employment so, rate is four percent yes so, so so the key is to to ma manage that to make those decisions where the sweet spot has been hit and mm -hmm. it's so, and and the extremes are not there where it's out of kilter and out of balance, and then you draw that you 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 draw the narrative around that, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden you start hearing people say, you know, I feel pretty good, I feel whatever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so I think that's where we're approaching under the Biden administration, and I think that's where he's trying to steer us to that sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. He well, first of all, I agree on the sweet spot because it is the individual's responsibility to find that balance on both sides of the trade. Mm -hmm. That's what it boils down to. Yeah. I disagree with, with Biden trying to push us to the sweet spot because one, it's not his job. Mm -hmm. Two, 
not many presidents have demonstrated to me that they know that it exists and how to get people there. Okay, how, I'm, I'm, how, gonna, how, I'm gonna agree with I, you on that because you know I I hear enough where people are saying you know these things are happening, but it really is the, the president has no control over. He has no, yeah, he has no control. Over I, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree and, with that. And if but he was a happening. client of mine, if he was a client of mine, I'd tell, I'd tell him, you know, Joe, I know you want to be reelected, and you got to paint yourself in a, in a, in a great light. And I'll tell any president this, but really, the one president that really got it or came close was Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. When uh, he, re when he realized that, when he had a talk with uh, James Carville, and Carville told him, it's, it's the bond point. market, stupid. Yeah, you got to keep the bond vigilantes happy. So you got to you got to watch. You got to be mindful of yes, your job. Governments one of government's jobs is to feed the bond market. So you got to watch how much spending you're doing, how big your deficits are, and that you're issuing bonds that you can pay back. You got to be a Lannister. Yeah, and that's what Clinton yeah. figured out, which was why he was able to leave with a stru structural surplus at the end of his tenure. Yeah. So yeah, from a macro level, he understood. But a lot of these other presidents, Kennedy, maybe he wasn't around long enough to get it. He had a good economy, you know, but you know, he got yeah, whacked. I, I, I think know. Biden's been around long enough to understand the whole iterative of working together to make something happen. He so understands. I, he understands the banks. I don't think he's an idiot. No, he's not an idiot. He understands the banks. He's from Delaware. He understands what they need. But he's not in a position really to give them what they need. He can't manage that, and rightfully so. It's not within his his bailiwick to manage it. They've dumped that off to the banks to yeah, manage. Yeah, and I that agree system. with that. I agree with that. But the idiot was the last four years. The previous president, he was an idiot. Well, I don't like him, but when it comes to finance, I don't know if he was an idiot or not. Because when he when he got into when he got into office, now he was calling for lower rates from John, mm -hmm. and um, you know he he did. The people that put him in said lower rates, and he was saying lower rates. Mm -hmm. You know, and he was no friend of banks. Banks didn't like him. That's something that right. people never never right. get that the banks the did not like this guy. The one thing that he did um, didn't ever really pay for itself, and he added to the deficit. And I don't. I was think about to say yes. Else he did. There's nothing else that he yeah, did. He, yeah, he he got together with his Republican buddies, and they issued exactly. bonds. So you put out this big ass supply of bonds. You drive down the price of bonds because you increase the increase the supply of bonds. But what does that do to rates? Mm -hmm. You know. So and that is that is the. Well, downfall is a strong word, but that's the curse of every president. But that's what their job is. They're supposed to feed the bond markets. However, you got to follow the Clinton model. Yeah, but you got yeah, to but... manage how you flood that bond market so people don't pay the heavy price of, of rates that are going to freeze them out of the market. Right. And, and perhaps he didn't get a chance to because of COVID or he didn't really understand the magnitude of the decision that he was making, but um, that was a poor move. So um, actually we have about two minutes and I gotta tell you, I really enjoyed the conversation with you tonight. I think that um, where I was trying to drive to was the clear de um, delineation between a Trump from the economy standpoint and a, and a Biden, because I'm certainly seeing that the economy, mm -hmm. uh, what he received was mess and he is rebounding that. However, well, I, I'll, give him, I'll, give him, I'll give him credit for one thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll find a, a second or third thing sometime. On. I'm, I'm not that mean, but if anyway. You do, if him, you do, put it out there. I, I'll put it out there, yeah. <laughs> I think he's one of the greatest politicians in in, Amer uh, in, in American he's, presidential history. And I said that before. And that's did. the last time I'm going to say that in public. But anyway, but no, 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 no. I the, didn't the know if thing, that was supposed to be a compliment or not, but I will say well, like, I'm going to well, take Well, no, because, I was speaking objectively and realistically. Once you understand what this system is about yes, and what he's so. supposed to do. Now, the, well, we're on national television. Anyway, but the one thing he has in common with Trump, which was lost in the noise with Trump. And I don't think it would have made him look any better than anybody else, but look, Trump believed in um, onshoring 
manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Biden believes in onshoring manufacturing. As a matter of fact, I would tell him, you know, instead of talking about your Bidenomics, playing that up, get away from that and focus on, I believe in onshoring because the way the world is going, Asia getting more cohesive. I won't get too much into the, the brick stuff. Europe's a hot mess. That's your number one trading block. We don't know what they'll be able to offer or pay for. We need to bring manufacturing back. And you got a bunch of workers who, yep. who, who are used to a certain type of job that are going to have to look at manufacturing. And those jobs pay well. You young people out there, they pay well. And, they, and, they're, and they're technology jobs. So they fit two stones. But the United States has to start producing stuff again for two reasons. One, national security. I'll just put it out there. You know, yep. I'm, yeah. yep. and but more importantly, so people can be employed. Yeah, I agree with that. And I guess he agrees with that as well. Um, I wanted to talk not tonight, but, you know, in the future, I want to talk a little bit about the impact of the um, something that's happening with Africa. I think one of you, either you or Albert, sent out an article about Africa getting sort of ditched because we are um looking at putting rules around um our green energy projects around the world and and africa countries is like one africa one. will yeah. suffer uh, third world countries like africa will suffer because uh they don't have the infrastructure to Oh well, I, I, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be. No, I'm not really being cynical. I'm just sharing what, what little I've seen, and it's like if the Africans are smart, they're going to say, "Look here, you Westerners have been telling us what to do for too long. We're going to talk to China and we're going to talk to Russia. They build us this stuff. We're going to settle contracts uh, in here and I blah blah blah. Like and and they're going to say, "You took out Gaddafi, but you won't get us this time." And that's what they're going to tell them. And, and then the U.S. won't be able to do anything because you're already busy in Ukraine. You're going to be busier in Israel. You really want to mess around. Even though you got troops there, you really want to mess around down there. I mean, you're going to, you might, you might, if it gets hot, you may shoot a few. But when they bring them back, machetes after you, it's a different game. And that's what they're going to tell. So the U.S. is talking a lot of noise. Macron is smart. The son of a bitch. I don't like I, that racist I, bastard. I, I, However, because he knows, he goes over there and he shakes hands with them. He shook hands with Xi Jinping. I don't think he's been shaking hands with Putin. That's a bridge too far. But he shakes hands with them. One guy, they kicked, some of them kicked him out. They said, you need to go. We've been putting up with your colonizing ass for too long. So <laughs> now he's got to change his approach. Yeah, he's got to change his approach. So he, I don't like him, but if a politician is doing what he's supposed to be doing within the rooms, rules of this realm, I'll give him his due because I'm, I'm watching him. So yeah, so Macron, he's like, the EU, they are, ooh, I do oh. not know. I need to balance out here. That's what he's doing. It really does. I mean, the world is changing. So kudos yeah. to him for understanding, being a democracy, understanding how the um, the other folks are kind of winning, especially over there. He yes. Is. And and that's the other thing we need to talk about in the next show. Democracy yeah, we'll, we'll and, and looking and, and getting beat by them guys, because there's a reason them guys might beat the U.S. And it's because of democracy. And that note, I'm going to close. And yes, we will talk about that. I'm going to write mm -hmm. that down. And we, yes. we will talk about that. Um, but good discussion tonight. Um, we got a lot to talk about. And as we close the year, I want to wish you um, a happy, happy new year and 2024. Let's bring it in with a roll, with a with a roar. Mm -hmm. And um, make sure that we are clearly talking to you, the viewer. Um, it's important to us that Black votes coalesce and try to figure out how to influence um, what happens in this country. Other groups are doing it. Yes. Why not us?